to make sure the uh, stream is good before. See, I should have had a, a pre-roll going <laughs> while we were trying to get all this going so we could get some people in here. But oh, well. Oh, well. Oh, well. We'll do it next time. <clears throat> I guess I could just say uh, we are live with a hostful goodness episode. Come AMA. Or I'll, I'll say ask us anything. All right. That's that's how we get apologies for later is ask us anything. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever we get a Spotify deal, we're going to have to apologize for what we say. Yeah. Uh, I don't like the way our page acts now. I don't know what, what page our Facebook page like it's a ha it's like is it something weird. Oh, actually. the whole thing. The whole page's interface changed like a month ago. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I don't like it either um to even just view our page you have to switch accounts i know and look at the page from your account and like i can't it's fucking stupid i can't post anything to the page from somewhere else like i have to actually just right. copy links and all that crap i'm like what is happening i don't like it yeah i don't like it i don't like it at all, all right, facebook is slowly turning away from you know being a promoting platform because yeah. they're just like they've made it very clear they don't want business being promoted on their yeah. fucking platform yeah they they don't need any more money they already have all, right. all the money in the world all right you want to read the uh the ad thing sure thing all right here we go in three two one it's another edition of the open micros podcast and this episode is brought to you by mr daniel salmon who said i just want to see jacob get tased and boy, did I. He got to see me get tased. <laughs> That's available on Patreon right now. Go to www.openmicers.com and pledge at least a dollar to be able to see that video. And that's what these lovely people have done, including Mr. Derek Diamond, Miss Kathy Gutierrez Figueroa, and old Rob himself, Mr. Robbie Hennig. They all get to watch the video for as little as a dollar a month. Thank you guys so much for being patrons. And let's start the show. It can only mean one thing. It is time for the Open Micers Podcast. My name is Jason Robbins. No egg whites, just yolk. I'm Jacob <laughs> Craig. And Jason, you uh, you got to tase me yesterday, yes. buddy. Yes, we did the uh, the tasing video thanks to uh -huh. our fifty dollar patron, fifty dollar a month patron, Mr. Daniel Salmon, who I never in a million years thought somebody would give us fifty dollars a month to. Yeah do our whatever stupid thing we were going to do and it was tase you which we did that yesterday and it is now available on the patreon so if you want to see that video of me tasing the hell out of jacob you're gonna have to pledge at least a buck yeah i think you tased me three or four times maybe three times i think twice in and the i arm tased and you once once in the stomach you got me once in the arm and yeah it hurt and it's a little it's a little sore today but it, it, it felt like a really, like if you got stung by a bee that was like the size yeah. of a baseball. Yeah. Um, I, I downplay how tough I am sometimes. So like <laughs> when you taste me in the arm, I was very disappointed because I was like, this isn't good content. No yeah. one's going to want to see me laughing about getting tased. So I s took my shirt off and I said, tase me in the tummy. And that was the best decision I could have made because that hurt like fucking shit. And then after it goes up on the Patreon, our unpaid intern, BJ DeBlow, goes in our production chat and says, aren't you supposed to tase somebody in the neck? I'm like, I'm not tasing Jacob in the neck. Are you psycho? <laughs> BJ wants to see blood, dude. He's like, like, I'm ready to kill that's... you. I'm like, no. I was iffy about the stomach. Because that's pretty close to the heart. I'm, like, that's where I draw the line. I'm not going to tase you in the neck. I'm sorry. That's not happening. I don't care how much we get paid. Yeah. That would definitely put me on the ground if you tase me in the neck. <laughs> but, hey, 
uh, people might not like it, but when I said on the Christopher Burdett episode that I feel like I can take a Tazen because I'm a pretty big guy, yeah, I was right. I can take a Tazen, all right. <laughs> Ooh, that was fun though. It uh, it's about three minute video and it's pretty mm -hmm. funny. Go check it out on the uh, openmikers.com. Takes you straight to our yeah. Patreon. Even if you just want to see the video, just pledge a, a buck for the month and then you know do what you're good at. Right. If you're gonna stay a subscriber, that's fine. We'd love for you to stay. But if you just want to do it for the month, that's fine too. Yeah, we have a lot of more shenanigans planned for that tier too. Like if we yeah. keep getting fifty bucks by somebody every month. Like we're gonna do increasingly horrible things. Like well, next, next month, we're gonna do a pepper uh, uh, yep. hot sauce challenge. And let me look up the Pepper Palace here. Uh, we have this place here on the coast called the Pepper Palace. And let me look at uh, some of their hot sauces. They have one in the store that literally you have to sign a waiver to just try it. Yeah, I think that's the one that we should buy. Because like, cause this doesn't sound ex as extreme as tasing somebody on paper, but in the long run, it's going to be so much worse because we're both going to do it and we're both going to regret it instantly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For their hot sauces, actually, this one is sold out. It's called the hottest sauce in the universe. Let's see what this is. It's $28 a bottle, Ooh. and it's from Ghost Pepper Extract. Okay. Yeah. Does it say the Scoville on it or no? Um, let's see. Scoville. No, it does not say what the Scoville level is. Yeah, well, we're going to get some kind of like fuck off hot hot sauce, like something that should not be ingested by people. Uh, we and could either I, do that or we could order. Um, where would you order the hot sauces from the hot ones? Uh, Heatonist.com. Heatonist? Heatonist. Oh, Heatonist. Yeah, um, I that's just, the I, hot one store. We might we might order something from there. I had the bright idea too of maybe getting like a Trivial Pursuit game or something like that. And if we get a question wrong, we have to eat a, a hot wing. Um, we could do it at the uh, the juke joint. We could. Let's see. We got the hottest hot sauces here. Let's see. Okay, we have the last dab, which is twenty dollars yeah. a bottle. Uh, the last dab Apollo says hottest dab ever. Um, yeah, that one doesn't have a Scoville yet either because they haven't <laughs> determined how hot it actually fucking is. <laughs> but the uh, let's see, the last dab Reaper edition is a ten out of ten. Uh, does it say? Oh, here we go. Pepper X, um, the last dab Triple X. Let's look at this. Because it says the heat, oh. the heat is eleven out of ten. Yeah, so I know about Pepper X. Pepper X is a pepper that is hotter than the ghost pepper. It's, it's over, like a newly new thing. It's over three million Scoville units. <laughs> we should get that one. <laughs> I, and I'm horrible with spicy food too. So like, I'm gonna drink so much milk, I'm gonna oh probably throw up. God. Three million Scoville. I might die. I might have a heart attack. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, I I wouldn't blame you if you only took a few bites, but we all know how dumb I am. I'm going <laughs> to eat all the wings. Well, I'm going to go ahead and order this because we have the money in the account now. <laughs> so okay. I'll go ahead and order us a bottle of this. And, and uh, I have to probably work my way up. So I might actually just go get some regular hot, hot sauces yeah. at the store and over the next couple of weeks just work my way up because this i'm serious this might actually kill me yeah see i'm not gonna do that and i'm just <laughs> gonna dry run it and i feel like i'm gonna hope wish, like wish to be tased again let's see i want to see what the last ab apollo says here uh it, yeah it doesn't have the scoville on it yet because I think yeah. that's the newest sauce. It's the newest sauce and supposedly the hottest sauce, but I feel like Pepper X is where to go. Yeah, Pepper X, Chocolate X, Peach X. <laughs> Chocolate, says, really? Yeah, it says uh, it says the ingredients are Pepper X, Chocolate Pepper X, Peach Pepper X, distilled vinegar, ginger root, turmeric, coriander, cumin, and dry mustard. 
Pepper X is the world's hottest pepper created by Guinness World Record pepper breeder Smokin' Ed Curry of Pucker Butt Pepper. Pepper. (laughs) God damn it. Pucker Butt Pepper Company. (laughs) I can't even say that. Yeah, I I feel like... Because I understand that this all sounds unappealing on paper, like compared to tasing me. But I feel like this will hurt way yeah, worse. Yeah, this is going to be, we might actually do some physical damage to ourselves with this. Yeah, I might like blow out my fucking palate. Like, I don't even know if you're, if you're, if you can even touch this with like bare skin. Oh, good point. We might have to wear gloves. And we're going to put this in our stomachs. Oh, man. Dude, and I already have the worst shits. <laughs> I, I, so if you subscribe to this tier, guys, and we already have someone in this tier, if he renews his pledge or if we get any more pledges to this $50 tier, I will post pictures of my shits in the Patreon. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you're going to get pictures of my shits in the Patreon. I don't Patreon. think we could do that. That's kind of gross. That's like an OnlyFans thing. (laughs) I don't know how you're going to stop me, Jason. You can delete the pictures, but they're getting posted in that Patreon. Dude, I I am so sensitive to heat now, like hot stuff. Yesterday, we went and ate all-you-can-eat crawfish at the juke joint. And the second batch they made was pretty freaking hot. And by that last night, I uh, I was hurting pretty good. Yeah, I, you know, crawfish isn't even really that spicy to me, to be honest. Well, it's the first batch wasn't bad. First batch was nice level of of heat. The second batch was, it definitely took a jump. Have I said on this, the podcast, the last time I ate crawfish? No. Okay, so the last time I ate crawfish, it was actually at Patty Dwyer's open mic, who's supposed to be our guest tonight, but for some reason she's not responding to my messages so we'll just i don't know have her on again sometime soon yeah but um it was at her open mic i had met this open micer for the first time named Corey cassiopo who's also coming up on the show soon to talk about conspiracy theories (laughs) and he uh at the time worked at his parents seafood restaurant and just randomly said i have 10 pounds of crawfish in my car and i was trying to give some away tonight and no one else took him up on the offer except me. And I said, yeah, I'll take some crawfish. And he gave me three pounds of crawfish in a trash bag. <laughs> and that's and I ate about a third of it on uh, on my dining room table. And then, uh, yeah, I, I shit pretty good. I shit pretty good. <laughs> But that was so bizarre meeting someone for the first time and they give you three pounds of crawfish in a trash bag. Yeah, that's, you know, that's normal. (laughs) It's like he knows me so well already. Of course I want trash bag crawfish. Yeah, it's great. You know, from who are you talking to? I always get crawfish from from people I don't know in parking lots in trash bags. (laughs) Look, Jason, if you know anything about (laughs) me. And we wonder why Jacob's uh, guts are, are not normal. Right, yeah. Yeah, I guess I get shirtless in the Patreon video, too. You guys yeah. get to see where all that crawfish went. Dude. <laughs> I, I watched that video back, and I did not realize how fat I've gotten just in the two years we've been doing this. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? Have you noticed my weight gain and said nothing to me? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> what? Hey, you gotta tell I've me. gotten big, too, dude. I've I over... COVID, just the like the first the first year of COVID when the lockdown happened, I gained sixty pounds in a yeah. year. I've lost about twenty five of it at this point, but I'm still up about about thirty five pounds from where I was before COVID. It's like my thing, dude, is like I keep playing with just the same twenty pounds. It's like I'll be down twenty pounds, and then I'm back up the twenty pounds. Yeah, that's just I break this for pounds. you, like you, <laughs> right? Like that's just that's Supposed just where I am in my before cycle you eat, not after. Well, this is this is all from when I go to the doctor. Like I, I don't weigh myself at home. Mm. I, I just every time I go to the doctor every three months for my diabetes, 
And then I'll go to the doctor and be like, oh, I lost 20 pounds. And then three months later, I'll go to the doctor and be like, there's that 20 pounds. Yeah. I don't know what happened, but when COVID hit, it was like I, I couldn't go to the gym anymore. I used to go to the gym at least three days a week. And, dude, as soon as I stopped going to the gym and was just eat, still eating like I was, it's not like I eat like a, a beast or anything. I eat like two meals a day. But, yeah. dude, it was just like. I didn't realize how bad my metabolism was because I'm, you know, I'm going to be 45 years old in less than two weeks. And I used to be able to eat like an entire large pizza by myself and not gain a pound. Yeah. And now, yeah. like, I just look at a box of Little Debbie's and like my ass gains 20 pounds. Yeah, if, if I want to lose any weight, I definitely need to do it now. Cause I don't see myself cause my metabolism's already dog shit. Yeah. Like well, that went out the window with my pancreas. <laughs> I would suggest just walking like dude, just, that road. No, I'm that okay. You, <laughs> that you live out in the middle of nowhere, dude. You could walk up and down yeah. that road for like a, you know, a mile or two a day, like in the afternoons. And that would be, you know, that would be enough. Yeah. No, I know I could. <laughs> You're not going to do I'm it. Not going to do it. <laughs> it's like, and, and I can eat crazy for sure. Like I have the ability to just fucking go buck wild. Oh, I can most too. Of the, most of the time I don't though. Like most of the time I, I do eat just like two meals a day. I eat before I go to work and then I eat when I come home from work. See, and, I, and, I naturally eat like a intermittent faster. Like I don't yeah. normally eat until like 11, 11 or noon. Like I just, I'm, yeah. I'm a breakfast. I'll eat breakfast on the weekends. Like if I sometimes I like to wake up on a Saturday or a Sunday, and I'll you know I'll throw some, I'll throw some flapjacks down. You know maybe some grits yeah. or biscuits or something. But normally I'm not a breakfast uh, eater, so I don't usually yeah. eat until like eleven o'clock, and then I'll eat maybe you know I usually eat after work too when I get off work like four o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'll have a snack before bed. And so I'm kind of naturally an intermittent faster, so that wouldn't that wouldn't help me if I tried intermittent fasting because yeah. that's what I do anyway. Yeah, I realize I just lied to everyone too. I I definitely eat more than that. Like, <laughs> I, <laughs> I definitely do because I don't I don't even think about when I'm at work because I'm I'm working I'm outside most of the time I'm running around like a chicken my fucking head cut off getting sweaty cuz I have to do everything at my job mm -hmm. just by myself um so I'm all over the place so I'll sneak snacks from the snack room like cookies yeah. or crackers or some shit like that and we have Kool-Aid jammers in the fridge that are Ooh. just for the workers so I'll get some Kool-Aid jammers or I'll buy a soda from the soda machine and they don't have diet in there mm -hmm. So I'll get like a regular Coke like once a day. And so I think that's where my weight gain. Has that's come my in. problem too, is the sodas. Cause so I do tend to eat a lot of uh, fast food just because it's so convenient, especially when it's I'm so good because I like to, I like to make my own lunch when I go to work and yeah. you know, I like to meal prep and stuff like that, but I haven't been doing that a lot lately. So I just, you know, run to McDonald's and I'll have, I'll get the four for $4. It's like a, a yeah. McDouble, four chicken nuggets, a small fry and a small drink. And they don't have oh. Coke Zero. So, I'll, and I don't yeah. like Diet Coke. So I'll just get a regular Coke. And that's where my, my downfall is. Yeah, dude, I'm so horny right now. <laughs> talk, talk to me more about that four for four. <laughs> No, I, so I'm, you, you came to my house for the first time yesterday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, now that I live just in bumfuck nowhere, yeah. like no delivery. Dude, I can't even get door down. I don't I understand how, like, I hated living where my parents still live, like mm -hmm. way up in the middle of nowhere. It's not quite as middle of nowhere now as, as bad yeah. as I thought it was when I was a kid. Because at least my parents can get, like, you know, Domino's delivered to their house right. now because there's so many people that live out there now because it's kind of like, you know, become the suburbs of Biloxi. But, guys, where you live, holy crap, you guys live out in the middle of freaking nowhere, man. I know. Like, if, yeah, so, I wasn't if you kidding. were to, like, if nobody was home and you collapsed, 
like you had like a diabetic episode, you're done yeah. for. <laughs> like it would take well, so long luckily, for the ambulance to get there. Yeah. Luckily, we have an ambulance station right by the turn on to my road. I know. I was wondering, did, is that still an ambulance station? Because that yes. used to be there when I worked for for Acadian. I didn't know if they still had it or if, if that was still the station or not. Yeah, there's an am, there's an ambulance station within five minutes of my house. Okay, luckily. good. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I live in fucking the middle of nowhere, but I work in the city of ocean Springs. I, I work 30 minutes from my house. So I'm going to have to fight the urge all summer long to not get Popeye's door dashed to my fucking job. Dude. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be a constant struggle and I'm getting a promotion too. So I'm going to be kind of everyone's boss. So if I just want to fuck off and eat Popeye's, <laughs> You bet your ass I'm going to do it. See, that's the problem. That's so dangerous. During COVID, like, I didn't want to cook anything, so I was constantly getting takeout. Like, because I, within a a one-mile radius of me, not even a mile, like a quarter of a mile radius, I have Popeye's, um, there's Little, the pizza places, Little Caesars, Domino's, Domino's, um, there's Marco's, Lost Pizza Company. And then oh, the Chinese, yeah. I got two Chinese restaurants within walking Ooh. distance. And I got Ooh, a hibachi, to me. a to-go hibachi place within a half mile. <sighs> there's Mexican restaurants. There's, dude, there's so many restaurants near right me. right there. And, like, just pop, there's Popeye's, there's Hart's yeah. Chicken, <laughs> there's yeah. Arby's, there's yeah. Mac- two McDonald's within walking distance. Two McDonald's, two. yeah, dude. Yeah, and and you live right by where I work. So all of those are options for me to get (laughs) delivered to me just from my fucking phone. And they will be at my work in five minutes. Oh, I forgot. New York Pizza Company is close by. Two, three subways. Three subways. They got cannolis at the New York Pizza. No. Fucking (laughs) talk about some leave the the gun, take the cannolis, baby. They have the calzones there. They have pizza. Oh, it's so good. I love that place. Oh, it's, yeah. There's McAllister's. I mean, I, there's Applebee's. Not Applebee's. Oh, no, yeah. not Applebee's. I ate Applebee's, Applebee's a couple dude. times because they had that two for 20 for, for a while. Yeah, no, I only go to Applebee's if I'm trying to get somebody pregnant. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that just what, for one of the waitresses. Regular. <laughs> no, well, just Applebee's is the go-to. You know, we got the two for 20. It's all romantic. We're going to oh, eat yeah. this shitty microwave food together. I, oh, and then... I figured you'd go to Waffle House for that. Oh, and Waffle well, House. There's like two Waffle Houses near the house. Oh. Well, Waffle House is a special occasion for me. And that special occasion is like if we've been out all night and it's three in the morning or if we had to get up early to do some bullshit and it's like eight <laughs> o'clock. <laughs> Those are the only two times we're getting Waffle House. Yeah. Waffle House is a nice late night. Even if you haven't been drinking. If you're if it's just late and you're like, man, I could really use yeah. some breakfast right now. Well, it's like if you're delirious and your body's like shutting down and your eyes are droopy, you get some of the greasiest hash browns yeah. this side of the Mississippi in your system. Boy, that's like a reboot right there. You know, the one thing that really sucks, like, because of COVID and, like, the job, the worker shortage now is because all the fast food places, like, this used to be a 24-hour town. Like, Biloxi, Ocean Springs, Gulfport, you know, we're a casino destination. We're a tourist destination. So everything used to be 24 hours. And now everything shuts down at 9 o'clock. I feel like I live, like, in the Bible Belt. Like everything just shuts down, like on a like you can't find anywhere to eat, like on a Sunday. Yeah, right. And, and dude, living in Van Cleve, everything is shut down. You would not think people live here after two p.m. I was going to your house yesterday, like I was because we were gonna like Angelina was said, said she wanted a snowball. I was like, well, there's got to mm-hmm. be snowball places. In Van there Cleve. is in Van Cleve, but not open on Sunday. They're not open. None of them. There was like three of them, and they were all closed. I was like, "What the hell, man? I don't. Uh, what hap- What what's happening? Why is everything closed?" Yeah, that's you're just not on the Lord's day. You know what I mean? Van Cleve <laughs> is very much that type of place. Like, yes, my nephew has a warrant for his arrest, and yes, we're going to go to church all day on Sunday. <laughs> 
Like that's very much what Van Cleef is. But you guys don't have any restaurants open on on Sundays. Where do all the church people mm-hmm. go to yell at all the workers for working on Sunday? Usually go. Um, well, actually, I don't know. I wouldn't know because I don't really associate with those kind of people. But there's usually a line of cars out of Van Cleef to go to some kind of restaurant yeah. in like Gautier or or Ocean Springs. Go to all them like godless heathen places in Ocean Springs with all them damn libtards. <laughs> yeah sorry i'm texting patty here she uh forgot that uh, she was supposed to be on and was not at home well just i i know. said <laughs> with jason here i didn't send patty a reminder because she remembered she was supposed to be on as of monday so i just thought well everything's gonna go without a hitch and then i didn't send her a reminder and now she's not well. here that's okay. It's okay. We haven't done a hostful episode in a while. We were due for one. We we definitely were. And I uh, dude, I, I have so much stuff to talk about because it's been so long since it's just been me and you. Well, hit me with I it. Uh, I I did a really fun show in Mobile. Um, not this last Saturday, but the Saturday before. Uh I mentioned it on the show that I was gonna be uh hosting for Daniel Van Kirk, who if you haven't seen this guy Hmm. fucking look him up because daniel van kirk is one of the funniest people i have ever seen in my entire life (laughs) live or recorded real like he is fucking beyond good dude Hmm. he's one of those guys who he doesn't have the biggest following he doesn't have the best credits but he fucking, if you go to see his show, you will be fucking satisfied because he is just that funny. Awesome. Like he's definitely, yeah, made a career off of just the merit of being <laughs> the funniest guy in the room. Like he like definitely, and he's the nicest guy too. Like he, like I asked him how he wanted to be brought up and he said, oh, just be nice. That's <laughs> it. Just, just be nice. And he was and he was super nice selling merch and everything. And his feature, Andrew Youngblood, is fucking hilarious and super nice too. He opens for Mark Norman on the road. He opens for all kinds of people. Like that was I think that was the most fun I've had at a show in a very long time. Yeah, he's got an album on uh Spotify, Dumb People Town. That's uh that's his podcast. Oh it's Dumb pod- People Town. Well it says album. Mm, he might Maybe he named a special after his podcast. I have to be completely honest. I didn't know about him before I opened, before I hosted for him. Like I, I didn't even know, I didn't know who he was, whatever. And uh, yeah, I didn't do any research about him or anything and went to his show and he's fucking a killer man. Yeah. There's a podcast and I think that's the name of uh, his album is dumb people town. I think so. Yeah. Um, well, maybe that is his, uh, his podcast. I know he has a, I think he has a Comedy Central special, if I'm not mistaken. It's hard to find stuff out about him because, you know, like I said, he doesn't have the the biggest following in the world. Uh, He has his website and I think he has an IMDB and that's it. Um, this is weird because it says Dumb People Town album, seven songs, and it has... It says, Welcome to Dumb People Town, Sklar Brothers. Everything says Sklar Brothers. Hmm. That is weird. Huh. Let's see. Podcasts. He does The Good Night Show with Daniel Van Kirk, which is like a late night talk show podcast. He does Pen Pals with Rory Scoville. Uh, they respond to letters people send them. And he, oh, and he does dumb people down with the Sklar brothers. Okay, is what it is. Ah, so it's okay. Daniel Van Kirk and the Sklar brothers on dumb Pe- dumb people town. Hmm. That's and that's cool. what he was really promoting while he was there was dumb people town. Okay, I'll check him out. I have to look up some YouTube videos. See if he has. Yeah, I'm sure you can find him on YouTube. Just check out Daniel Van Kirk on YouTube. Um, yeah, dude, he's he's one of those guys, just like Sean Patton, where. You meet him in person and you're like, ah, yeah, this is just an everyday guy. Super fucking nice, super cool, talking about regular things. And then they get on stage and then just like they're secretly 
one of the best stand-up comics you've ever seen in your yeah. entire life. That's and cool. no one knows about them for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that's always weird when that happens. I, we, because we've seen quite a few funny-ass people uh, mm-hmm. over the course of our, our open mic career. And we're like, how are these people not more well-known? Right. Yeah, dude, I can name off... 10 comics on the top of my head who are le- or who are less funny than Daniel Van Kirk who have millions of fans and dollars in the bank account. Yeah, I could look at Netflix right now and tell you about and just, <laughs> just point out which ones are not right. funny. <laughs> right. It's like, dude, I... I mean, you know, I can't say they're not funny, but they're just, they're not as funny as some people out there right. who are more deserving uh, because they are just brilliantly funny. Right. Like look at look at Brendan Schaub's most recent special and look at Theo Vaughn's most recent special. Those two specials are not as funny as what I have seen from Sean Patton and Daniel Van Kirk Mm -hmm. and so many fucking other and Mo Alexander. Like those guys should be millionaires. Yeah. Based off of their talent. Exactly. But they're not. I guess um, I wonder if Sean we need to have him back on the show so we can tell him that Scuttlebutt's got uh, is no more. And Scuttlebutt's no more? Yeah, Scuttlebutt's is gone. When did this happen? Uh, Like a couple weeks ago, they shut down Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt's uh, is no more. He, he probably knows by now. He probably has tons of people DMing him. Yeah. Man, I wonder why. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was a sarcastic question. I know exactly why. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because yeah? Because it's a... Yeah, because it's been like the most like urban legend, like shittiest strip club you could ever imagine. It's 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 like the strip club from From Dust Till Dawn, but somehow worse. Could it have been? I don't. I don't. Do you even know what the horseshoe is? If I say the horseshoe lounge, um, I only know of it because of Wally's stand up and Jimmy James's stand up. The Horseshoe Lounge in Biloxi was run by gangsters, basically, like okay. uh, uh, the Dixie Mafia. Um, the, uh, I forgot. The, the prominent families, like the uh, last names. Um, but basically, like, I, I went there a, a few times. Like, me and Wally went there once for a uh, um, bachelor party, and yeah. it was quite possibly one of the grossest places I've ever been in my life. Like it was like, I didn't want to touch anything and they make you buy. It's like a two drink minimum, but they couldn't sell liquor. Oh, wow. And so you had to buy like a $5 Coke and they gave you like this little Dixie cup of Coca-Cola. I'm like, wait, they didn't even have beer. No, no, they could. Oh my God. Because in Mississippi, uh, you, if you get naked, or show boobs, you can't have liquor in the same establishment. You can't have any alcohol. Nope. Whoa. No wonder we have no strip clubs anymore. Yeah. There's no strip clubs anywhere in Mississippi, I don't think. There used to be yeah. one on the way to Hattiesburg. It was like this little uh, tiny little place, like right outside of Hattiesburg, where all the uh, the USM girls would go and strip on Friday and Saturday nights oh, for money. Oh, wow. And it was funny because like this little bitty place – like no bigger than like uh, probably a, I don't know like the size of of like a shed <laughs> you know or yeah. something like it's so tiny and like but they had this huge billboard up right behind it that was like it's it was and even to this day it's still like that billboard was put there at, for the churches in the area and it was like this strip club and then right above it was this huge billboard that says, like, Jesus loves you. <laughs> yeah. Well, those girls probably needed that. Yeah, they probably needed, you know, they, they you know, got to get through uh, um, medical school. So, you know, they need the money. Right. Yeah, I, um, me and my friends once, I, I tried to talk them into going into a strip club on a Tuesday afternoon. Now... <laughs> I I really wish they would have taken me up on it I, because this was like the, it was the strip club. It was the last strip club in Biloxi and it was the one that was behind big play entertainment center. Yeah. That, that was, now that no was the horseshoe. That was the horseshoe. Yeah. Yeah. That was the horseshoe lounge. Oh shit. I didn't even know the name of it. 
I tried to drag my friends in there on a Tuesday afternoon because I knew that it was going to not be there much longer. glad you didn't because, like, that's like some – it's like something – it was like something out of – like, actually, they did film a few movies there. I think one of the yeah. Nicolas Cage movies was filmed in there. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Which one? National I, Treasure? I, no, it was like one of his crap movies that he made a few years ago. <laughs> It was a big Kid, deal. The, you don't remember that? They were they were like, Nicolas Cage is here filming a movie. And it was at the God. Horseshoe Lounge. Did one of them old bitches play the Declaration of Independence? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> get stolen by Nicolas Cage. It was like, and, and, and we'll have to get Wally on here to tell that story of when we yeah. went there for the, the bachelor party. Because that story is 100% true. It was horrifying. Yeah, I I don't know if you'll want to tell it because I think he does it on stage. Yeah, I don't want but, to tell it. It's we we'll have to get one here. I, I wish I would have gone because let me tell you, Jason, I'm in desperate need of material. So <laughs> any dumb shit that anyone wants me to do or I can get myself into, you better believe I'm down. I well, can transfer that into cash money. If it was still open, I would take you there, but. I would, oh, if it was still open, you couldn't stop me from going. Oh, uh, you would need a, like a bucket of hand sanitizer and just bathe in it after you leave, and before you go in, <laughs> while you're in there, just just bring like a forty gallon container of it in there. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I feel like I'm the kind of person bred for that environment because like <laughs> today on my way home from work, I stopped at the Circle K. And I tried to buy a hot a hot dog off of the roller thing. Ew. And I, I didn't know how to how it worked if like the employees needed to get it for me or whatever, because there's like there's no buns out there and the bun drawer has employees only on it. Mm -hmm. So I asked one of the employees, like, how do I get a hot dog? And she said, I don't know. I've never sold one. How long have those hot dogs been on that roller? I don't know, but I couldn't buy one because she didn't know how to sell it to me. <laughs> Why do they have a hot dog machine then? I don't. No one tries to buy them. Where is? Where was this? The Circle K in Ocean Springs, across from the Walmart. <laughs> that's a nice. That's a nice gas station too. Yeah, but like I'm that kind of person where I'm the one motherfucker that wants the hot dog. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, if I was gonna eat a hot dog from a gas station, that would be the gas station to get one from because it's very nice and yeah. There. Those hot dogs are good. They had some cheese. They had some cheese-filled sausage dogs, and if you know anything about me, I'm down for a cheese-filled sausage. They dog. They have those tornados in there that are pretty good. Oh, dude, do not get me started on the tornados. Those are my <laughs> fucking go-to, brother. Let dude, me tell you, just, you, you just went Hulk mode. <laughs> Let me tell you, brother, about the tornados. Okay, they're the cream of the crop. Ooh, I don't know about that. Man, Randy <laughs> Savage impression. It's not good. Not not a I good mean, impression. I like. Oh no, the impression was good. Need, it, oh, you need you. to workshop it. Workshop it. Okay, a bit. I'll workshop it. Um, no, I I fuck with it. The, they have the ranchero steak tornadoes, and they have the uh the pizza tornadoes. I think that was what the, I had was the pizza tornado. Yeah, brother, dude, those things are so good. Like I, they are good. I'm I'm I will admit that, but that is something like you eat that, and that is the equivalent of eating just pl just straight up just eating garbage. Yeah, I've done that before. There's nothing nutritional about those things. They're strictly, they're like you may as well eat like I don't know, like styrofoam or something. They have <laughs> yeah. about as much nutritional value. You might as well just free base fentanyl if you're gonna kill yourself <laughs> <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> Just go cook up a, a nice uh, sun-dried dog turd that you found in the parking lot. Right. I don't know, man. I today when I, I instead of a hot dog, I bought a, a bacon cheeseburger that they had ready, and the um, the discard time was like an hour before I bought it. I still ate that motherfucker, dude. I don't care yeah there is like there there's this gas station near me that's uh i think it's a chevron right up on highway 90 and i used to not go there because it, it just looks shady like yeah have you ever seen those gas stations that just look like you know they sell crack out of there it looks horrible horrifying yeah you mean the dodge store 
No, not that one. No, there's a <laughs> Chevron. But, yeah, the Dodge store is pretty bad. But the Chevron, I used to never go there. But I started going there recently. And it's become my new favorite gas station. Because there's, you know, there, like, until yesterday, like, the, there were no, like, bums or, like, homeless people. Yeah. Like begging you for money, like the other gas stations. But there was a girl out there yesterday begging for money, and I was like, well, I, I don't carry cash on me. I'm sorry, but I go there. I, I get Barks root beer in the bottle. They always got the good candy in there. They always got and good then pay chips. cash, you piece of shit. <laughs> but there's this old lady that works in there in the mornings, and and a lot of times I go there in the morning. Like if I'm running late, I go there to get coffee uh, from her, and she like personally. In the little kitchen there makes uh, BLTs with Ooh, the toasted okay. bread and all this, and they're so good. And I trust her because she's like a little grandma. I'm like, if I'm yeah. going to get gas station food, it's going to be from her because she's right. so nice and she's always friendly and she's always back there making the sandwiches in the morning. So I'm like, if I'm going to eat from a gas, like, like sandwiches from a gas station, it's going to be from her. Oh, dude, I'm a connoisseur in gas station food, Daddy. I know all the best the the best spots. I, I did see the stop. honey hole yesterday. You mentioned the honey <laughs> hole it. before. I'm like, that's uh, that's risque. Yeah, the honey hole, and and it says on the thing, beers, burgers, and pretty cashiers. Doesn't even <laughs> rhyme. Not even alliterated. Like that. That's the gas station that like old men go to to flirt with underage high school girls. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 like where the... Jeremy Kirkland goes to hit on Van Cleve <laughs> cashiers. He's mentioned that before, I think, on the podcast. Wow. He's, he's he tells me every time we talk that he goes to Van Cleve to flirt with cashiers. And I'm like, you know that they're 17, Jeremy. Why are you doing it? We got to have him back. We got to have, we got to have him him back to defend himself. Cause now I'm framing him in a bad light (laughs) and he's dark enough as it is. He doesn't need any bad lighting on him. Uh, yeah. He's my friend. I can say that. I've been to the honey hole before, but back when I used to go there, when I was an EMT and we used to stay up at that station, you know, I would get, I would get assigned to that station every once in a while. We would stop there, but it wasn't called the honey hole. It was just a, a shell, a shell station. When did it become the honey hole? It's been there forever. It became the honey hole when I was in high school. Like, why would they call it the honey hole? Because that's just what the new owners called it. Like, it's, yeah, I agree. It's, it's a bad idea. I don't know why. And And that's, they don't even have good food there. And that just sounds, I don't know, that just sounds very sketchy for old men to be flirting with, yeah. you know, 15, 16-year-old cashiers. That's just, that's not cool. Well, I mean, that's the that's the kind of place that Van Cleave is. But now, see, if you want the good food, if you want the good food in Van Cleave, you got to go to Miss Heather's, baby. Who's Miss Heather? Miss Heather's. Oh, Miss Heather's, you passed it to go to my house. It's right, it's right across from the Van Cleave old place. Where you go to get your hardware needs. <laughs> I was wondering what that place was. It, we passed this place and it says Van Cleve Old Place. I'm like, what the hell are they? Like, that tells me nothing. Like, is that where yeah. they put all the old people in Van Cleve, <laughs> the old place? Um, Do they, no, wait, sell, you, you s- they sell grandmas there? Like, you look at, you need a new grandma? Come on by the old place. <laughs> You need a cornbread recipe? Come on in. <laughs> uh, no, that it used to be an HP Davis grocery store, but they burned it down for the insurance. So Jesus. now it's the Van Cleave old place. Yeah. No, I know all the Van Cleave history, wow. Daddy. I got, the, I got the dirt. But no, Miss Heathers, they charge a little bit more for their gas, but they do it because they know that you're going to stop for a chicken on a stick anyways. Mm. That chicken on a stick from Miss Heathers. I would kill a man with the stick from the chicken (laughs) for another chicken on the stick from Miss Heathers. That's how fucking decadent it is. Wow. That's uh, so good. I'm going to have to try this then. But that's so far out of the way from, like, I passed the wards and I was like, man, I got to come up here and get some wards because I love wards. Wards is great. That root beer is something else. But I don't want to have to drive up to Van Cleve just to go there. Yeah, not worth it, man. Not worth it. Wars is not all that. It's just not. Is it just I not mean, as bur- good as I remember it being? Or 
No, their burgers are small. Really? Um, they have a very limited menu. It's all weird, like frozen shit. Ew. See, I used to go there just for the root beer and the chili cheeseburger. They still have that. Yeah, you can still get that. But they have like a catfish platter that's like definitely just frozen catfish. Who goes to Ward's to get a catfish catfish platter? Like, oh, yeah, you, of course. Yeah, I had it. It wasn't very good. (laughs) Um, But uh, Circa went back from the Dodge store. I've done the, I told this story on stage. I don't think I've told it on the podcast before. But um, I, I went on the road to Panama City one time. And after the show, about midnight, one in the morning, the only place open to get food is a Dodge store that's close to the owner of the bar's house that we're staying at. And so I come into the the house with uh, a bag of spicy chicken wings from the Dodge store. And one of the people that was local to there, one of the owners of the bar, told me, Jacob, why did you get food from the Dodge station that people buy crack at. (laughs) I wasn't aware that you weren't supposed to get food here because it's a front for crack cocaine. And I ate it anyways. And I barely made it to the show the next night because I was on fire. (laughs) Did you get food poisoning? I might have gotten a degree of food poisoning or I might have ingested a little bit of crack cocaine. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit of both. And that's that's what the Rotel Dip girl would have wanted. Isn't that what the old El Paso? That's what the old El Paso girl would have wanted was a bit of both. And if anybody listening to this not from the South, Dodge's Dodge's chicken is a staple of gas stations throughout the South. Like, it's just, you'll know you're in the South when you see a gas station that advertises that they have Dodge's Chicken in their little uh, cafeteria area. And it's so good, but it hurts you so bad. It's so bad. Like, you should not eat that. That's like the worst chicken you can get. It barely classifies as food. I don't even think it's probably not even chicken. I think it is drugs. Because it tastes (laughs) so good. But it makes you feel so bad. It's probably pigeon or something. Well, I, you know, pigeon's a delicacy now. Did you know this? No, You're I not didn't. This? Yeah, Gordon Ramsay serves pigeon in his restaurants. Still not going to eat it. I will. You can put the hot sauce on the pigeon. And... <laughs> on pigeon wings. <laughs> pigeon wings. <laughs> Who's who's gonna cook the hot the wings? By the way, are we doing this at your place or my place? Uh, who's who's think, frying the wings? Well, I was thinking we could do it, either do it at the juke joint or we could just get some wings from somewhere and we could we could do it at my house. That's fine. Okay. It doesn't yeah, matter. Can, uh, I just I want to be somewhere safe so that if yeah <laughs> if I you know like have a stroke or something, I want to at least be near a hospital. Yeah, I, I, it's more ideal for me to shit my pants at your apartment than it is at the juke joint. <laughs> and I think we may be able to, yeah, I'll just get some actual real cow's milk yeah. before we do it as well. Because I don't think they have milk at the uh, the juke joint. They they do, but I don't think they keep a lot of it on hand because they only have it for like white Russians. Or yeah, whatever. I was going to say just whatever drinks that have milk. And that's always gross to me. Have you ever had a mixed drink with milk? Like why would... I never understood that. Like alcohol and milk? Ew. I I've had someone's made me a drink before. Um, I don't know what it's called, but it tasted like cinnamon toast crunch milk. And it, it was it was milk, Malibu rum, uh, and fireball whiskey. Mm. And that it was really good. I still don't want milk in my alcohol. Yeah, I you know what? I just Yeah. I don't know. I would I would rather my alcohol to milk ratio be more alcohol than milk. <laughs> I don't want any I don't want milk in the in the ratio. I, I want no <laughs> milk anywhere near the ratio. I fucks with it. I tried to fart on my microphone, by the way. I don't know if you I was wondering that. what you were doing. <laughs> I figured yeah, you were trying I, to fart into the microphone. I tried, but it just wasn't vibrant enough and I have I have to poop too bad, so I wasn't gonna <laughs> uh, force it too much. But um I, I th- 
Whoa, what were you going to say? I was going to say, I think it's just about time to wrap up this yeah, episode. I was going to say, happens. I think we're getting to the end. So I was going to ask you if there's anything else you wanted to bring up before we go. Not really, man. I'm I'm taking a little hiatus from doing stand up right now. Um, I do. I have a show booked in June, but I'll talk about that closer to the date. Um, but aside from that one show that I have booked, I'm just focusing on uh, my work, my job, writing some new material and promoting for the podcast. Yeah, so, uh, I think um, I've I've missed the last couple of weeks of uh, open mics, and I think I'm going to do the same. I think I'm just going to take the rest of this month off from any open mics or anything and uh start june off with going out of town trying to get some booked gigs and uh hitting up some of the open mics that are popping up in new orleans now and uh see if i can start expanding because i i i'm kind of getting tired (laughs) of being around here yeah yeah i just need my own car basically once i have my own car i can go back to grinding at some stead and I, I would like to get back to the momentum we both had before COVID hit because we were both mm-hmm. firing on all cylinders, going out of town, doing out of town shows, and then COVID hit. And I feel like I've been spinning my wheels ever since. Like, even though things are starting to come back, things are starting to open, I still feel like I, I, I'm just not, not where I want to be. And I feel stuck and unmotivated and I need to, to work on my motivation to get back out and achieve that momentum again. Yeah. But, but because of the pandemic, we have this podcast, so yeah, not true. everything's bad. Yeah. But I uh, ho- hope you guys enjoyed this uh, impromptu hostful goodness episode. And um, I don't know what to call it. What, what should we call this episode? I don't know. We could, we could call it uh, a bit of both. Right. Shout out to the El Paso girl. She's going to be on the show next week. Uh, um, how about chicken on a stick? <laughs> chicken on a stick. We could call it. Uh, we could call it dodgy chicken. <laughs> dodgy we could call chicken. it. Um, yeah, I like dodgy chicken. That's we can call it dodgy name. chicken. There it is. All right, <laughs> that sounds good to me. Um, so I guess that's going to bring us to the end of the episode. Um, anything else before we get out of here? Not really, man. Just uh, just check out Open Micros Podcast on TikTok. Uh, that's our main thing. Check us out on Patreon, www.openmicrospodcast.com. And those are our two main hubs that have exclusive content on it. So we have, you know, awesome clips from the show on TikTok and really cool bonus content on the Patreon. And you're going to miss out on both of those if you don't go subscribe. Yeah, just go throw us a, a dollar on the, uh, the Patreon and you get to watch that video of me tasing jacob and him tasing me in the arm which it hurt, yeah. it hurt but i don't know i got you pretty good in the stomach and i felt bad oh, yeah. all afternoon because it looked like it hurt and i it apologize did. it hurt a lot so, thank you guys for hanging out with us and uh, we will see you guys next week whoa the old el paso girl's hot now <laughs> Okay. Wait, I should look and see if she's 18 before I say that. Yeah, you should. Now you're on a list. (laughs) She's 20. She's 20. It's okay. I did the math. She's 20. All right. We'll we'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube and uh, Twitch or whatever, thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you next week.